This is the Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life. Brighten up your life. Hello, everybody. It's Paul Neeson with the Raw Life Health Show. I am going to give everybody an update on my yard right now, my tree situation. I have trees that I put in here about, I would say, about two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago. And we'll get started right here in this corner. I did have a lemon tree, and I just replaced the lemon trees with uh, bananas or some of them. And this is a banana tree. The lemon tree wasn't growing here in the corner. It wasn't getting enough sun. So I put this banana tree here, and it's going to grow very nicely because the bananas don't need as much sun as the citrus does. And right next to it, uh, I have the baranga tree. And as you can see here on the floor, uh, what I've done since I... I, I got this in is I put a system in a well and I got a sprinkler system near each tree. But this is a moringa tree that's growing really well and this is an edible tree. So moving along here, I have my, one of my uh, coconut trees. The coconut trees are growing really well and uh, this is going to be a nice coconut tree. They're all dwarf coconut trees. They're not going to grow too tall. I have two different varieties. I have yellow and green coconuts. So this one I believe is a yellow one and it's uh, one of the two that I have in my backyard, most of them are up front. Over here I have a lime tree, and uh, it's, it's still small right now, and hopefully it'll grow nicely, but this is one of the few citrus trees I have in the yard. Citrus uh, is questionable how it'll grow here in South Florida, we'll see. Uh, at one point there were hundreds and hundreds of citrus trees everywhere, but the government came in and knocked them all down because they said there was some fly going around. And uh, so there aren't as many in South Florida as there used to be. It's a shame, but I'm trying to bring some back. Here's a papaya tree. This one just grew. I just threw some seeds here, and the, the tree grew. There's no papayas on here, but there'll be some very soon. And moving along here, here's a banana tree. I originally, when I first started this yard, I had an orange tree here. Uh, but uh, I moved that, and I put this banana tree here. So this tree uh, is a dwarf banana tree, so it won't grow too high. My neighbor actually has uh, solar panels on his roof, so I didn't want the banana tree to go too high. So we got a dwarf banana tree right here. Here's one of my mango trees. All my mango trees are different seasons, uh, mangoes. And this one is a, a Kent or a Kit, I believe. I've already had some mangoes on here, but it's growing real nicely. I'm not going to let them get too high. Uh, this one, I'm very happy with the way it's growing. Uh, and it's uh, a great late season mango. Over here I have a mission fig tree. Now I moved this several times in the yard and I think I finally found a good place for it now. Uh, I've had some figs on here already. This is a mission tree tree. Mission fig. Okay. This was a transplant from another property. This is a, a sour sap tree. I have four sour sap trees, also known as guanabana. And I really like these. I haven't gotten anyone on this one yet. But I'm looking forward to when I do. It's one of my favorite fruits and one of the most sort of after fruits in uh, Florida. Here's another mango tree. This is a, a kit, and the other one was a kent. And this one, I did have an issue, a problem initially where it broke, uh, but it's growing back real nicely. I did have several mangoes on here this season. This is another late season mango. Uh, it's going to grow very nicely. Again, I'm not going to let them get too tall. Here I have a tangerine tree. This is a Susuma orange tangerine. Uh, I've had oranges on here. It's growing very nicely. I'm happy with the spot. And uh, people don't know this, but trees are a lot more maintenance than, uh, than it seems. But hopefully when they grow up, it won't be as much. But I am going to keep them short. My neighbor here has a, a can of steel fruit, which is an egg fruit. Uh, and uh, right now, there's nothing on here. But it's leaning over to my yard. Oh, there's one on there right there. So it's, uh, it's, it's leaning over so I get to have some of that fruit. That's great. And back here I have another, uh, another coconut tree in the corner there. A corner is a great place to plant coconuts. And that's a nice spot for a coconut tree. As we come around here, I, have, I put these two in either two Florida persimmon trees. We have one here and one here. And these are two Florida persimmon trees that I'm excited about because uh, I just hear that they're just wonderful. So... Moving along, this is one of the best trees in my yard, uh, producing and also just uh, growing. This is a lemon meringue mango. 
It's one of the early season mangoes. We already had uh, a good amount of mangoes on this this season. It was delicious. Uh, I'm not going to let it get too much taller, but that's a lemon meringue mango. Here I have another early season mango. Uh, this one is a... I think it's a Glen mango. Uh, and uh, I believe it's a Glen. It might have, I'm, I'm messing up the name here, but... So this is one of my earlier mangoes as well. It's grown really nice. I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, moving along. Yeah. Here's my cherry tree. This is my uh, acerola cherry tree. Very high in vitamin C. Uh, various times we get a lot of cherries on this. I cut it back already and straightened it out. It's growing really nice. And uh, again, I'm not going to let it get too much bigger. It's, been, it's just been great. Now up here, this is my banana tree. This is probably the, the tree I got the most fruit off since we've started. And you can see there's two bunches of banana up there right now. There's one bunch there, one on the other side. And uh, so this, uh, I've already taken uh, at least 100 bananas off this tree already. And uh, I'm really excited about this tree. It was so good, I ended up getting seven more banana trees. And this is one of them right here. Uh, so this will grow very nicely as well. I'm uh, just loving these banana trees. now. Uh, this tree here is an avocado tree, and this is one of the ones that didn't do too well, uh, but it's coming back, so I'm, I'm giving it a shot. Uh, so it would be a nice banana, uh, avocado tree right here, a nice spot for one. So we'll see how that goes, but it's green, it's coming back. I think it'll make a good comeback. Here's another banana tree. They're all different varieties of bananas. This one I put in recently. It's already growing a good amount. And uh, as you can see behind me, you can see a wall now, because I previously had passion fruit along the whole wall, uh, but uh, I've taken that out because it, for some reason the passion fruit wasn't growing. So that whole wall is empty and it opened up these spots for these banana trees. So I got two more banana trees here. I just put these in recently uh, as they continue to grow. These are uh, two different varieties of banana trees and uh, they will continue to grow and, and get bigger. And then there's another one here. Again, uh, each variety is a different variety of banana trees. Uh, so, very excited about those. Uh, right here, I have my sugar apple, my Atamoya tree. Uh, this one did what did break, and it came back, and it came back nicely, and it will be nice right here. Right over here, we have a, a lychee tree, and uh, this is growing real nice. We didn't get anything on it yet. Uh, right now in South Florida, some lychees aren't growing as well, but this is a lychee tree, and it's going to grow nice here. It's a really big tree, but I'm not going to let it get too big. This tree is probably my favorite fruit in the garden. This is a white sapote tree. A uh, white sapote tree is not very common or well known, but it's gonna be, uh, once I get some fruit on here, I'm liking the way it's growing, a white sapote tree. Again, if you see on the back wall, I took all of my, all of my passion fruit off, and uh, I'm sad about that, but it did open up and make things cleaner for some other things to grow. So this is a, a, a longin tree, and uh, we just had a bunch of longins that are in season right now. Not from this tree, from another tree I have, and from a French tree. But uh, longins are a great fruit, uh, a great, wonderful fruit. So here's a fig tree. This is more uh, of a Turkish fig. They grow uh, better here than the black figs. And the Turkish figs do much better than the, than the mission figs over there, what we have. There's several different types of figs that can grow here in Florida. But my tree guy says the Turkish ones grow the best, and they are growing the best. So we got a bunch here that aren't ripe right now, but we've gotten a good amount off this tree. And this tree I've had to actually move two different times, but it found the spot it likes finally. And they like the other spots as well, but the problem was I wanted to put other trees there, so I moved this here. So I'm moving along here. This is a lemon tree. This was one of my first trees on a property, and all these other trees are great and delicious, but the lemon... Is something that I would use often, and it's expensive to buy good organic lemons in the store. So I wanted to have a lemon tree. So this is, a, I think it's a bear lemon tree, a B-E-A-R lemon tree. And uh, it's, it's a common lemon. So it hasn't gotten any lemons yet. It's growing nice. And citrus sometimes have problems growing here in South Florida. So uh, I had to do some things to keep it going, and hopefully it'll, it'll bear some good fruit. Now, as we can see, all my bigger trees I put on the other side of the yard because the sun comes from this way, and I didn't want the sun to block, the big trees to block the sun from coming on the other trees. And these trees will grow smaller. Now, I can control how big all the trees are going to stay by cutting them, and I'm not going to let them all get too big, but my mangoes and other ones are bigger, so that's why they're on that side. 
and a lemon and a long and so on. I'm going to leave on this side and I'm not going to let them get as big. So, here is one of the several avocado trees I have on the property. And just like my mangoes, each avocado uh, has a different season. So, uh, these are the seasons. Uh, uh, this is uh, one of the seasons. And this one, again, when it started, it didn't look too good, but it came back nicely. And I've ha I have other properties with avocado trees, and uh, they really produce in abundance. So we have, I think we have four different avocado trees in a property, maybe five, and they're all different seasons. So we should have mangoes for most of the year and avocados for most of the year. For me, avocados and lemons uh, aren't necessarily my favorite, but they're the most commonly used. So they're the most two that I wanted to make sure I had on a property. So we've got them. So the next three trees we're going to show is actually uh, my favorite. We showed one already. I have four of them on a property. Those are my guanabana, my soursop trees. And these I actually got some uh, soursop already this year. And uh, these are growing. I'm not going to let them get much taller than they are now uh, because the fruit gets heavy and they tend to break. Uh, even the leaves on this tree are very great for uh, cancer and other things, but the fruit is excellent for cancer. And I have three of these on a the property. And uh, I'm well, four on the property, but three right here. So that's one, that's two, and, and here's the third one. So uh, I'm really excited about this fruit. I love it. It tastes great. And it's not, it's not easy to find outside of South Florida in, in the United States. Uh, even if it's shipped, they don't ship it to too many places. Now, uh, behind here, uh, this whole wall was lined with passion fruit, but I took the passion fruit off as I explained earlier. But this passion fruit I kept, it's a different type of passion fruit. And uh, we're going to see how it does. So we got some flowering about to happen in it. And uh, so these are sweeter passion fruit as opposed to the bitter ones. Then I have one more tree back here in the backyard. So, Look what I just found on the floor. Oh, this is great. <laughs> this is a soursop. Came right up the tree. I didn't even know it was there. And it's ripe. It's ready to go. And there's my dinner. All right. Perfect. Hallelujah. Oh, so this was a new tree that I just put in. I had a, I actually had over here a, a, a papaya tree, but I removed it and put this banana tree. Uh, and uh, this banana tree will just grow nicely here. So I got a good amount of bananas I put here. And then I have my jackfruit tree here. I love jackfruit. It's one of my favorite fruits. I have three on the property, I believe. And this is a, uh, nothing's been on here yet, but it's growing nicely. And the one in the front, hopefully, and the one in the back will grow as nice as this one. I'm excited about uh, the jackfruit. Jackfruit is the world's heaviest fruit, the world's biggest fruit. They grow up to 50 pounds on the tree. So let's go uh, to the front. But before we do, let me show you here. This is my well system that I got put in. Uh, I was using city water, but uh, we, we had a, a well dug in and a pump and a tank. And this well will control all the water on the property uh, for the trees. So uh, it used a little extra electricity, but I don't have to pay for water to water my trees now. So I'm really excited about that. While we're making it to the front of the house, I just passed this one up. This is a dragon fruit tree that I forgot to show you all before. And uh, my friend just cleaned it up. Uh, all the branches that were around it and everything else. We did have some dragon fruit flowers and dragon fruit will grow out of this. They only flower very briefly, but then the fruit will come out. And this is a, a, a red dragon fruit, I believe. And it's, uh, you have to put it on some trellis or something, but this is gonna grow really nice. And uh, so that's dragon fruit. There's many different variety. So this is uh, one of my favorite variety. Very healthy, very healthy. So let's go to the front and see what we got there. All right, so here's the front of my property. And uh, this here, we have a Persian mulberry tree. And we also have grafted on it a different, another type of mulberry. Uh, so we're going to get two different types of mulberries on this tree. And uh, this is one of the few trees I put here in the front. Uh, various wild berries that uh, not as many people would take if they're in the front. Uh, and, and it's just a great tree to have in the front. And it's... It's easy to trim back and it grows real quickly. As you can see, it's empty over here because uh, I have room for more trees, but right now I'm using that for parking and stuff. This actually up here is a very big old long end tree uh, that my neighbor has, and there's no way I want mine to get that big. When they get that big, they don't really produce well uh, or as well, and there's no way I want mine to get that big, but his leans over my side, so I get some of them. All right, so of all my trees on the property, uh, believe it or not, one of my favorite trees that I recently put in is not even an edible tree. And I first told myself I wasn't going to waste time with trees that weren't edible until I got 
one of these trees and another property. This is a langing, uh, a lang lang tree. Lang -lang. And uh, it has these flowers on here. And these flowers smell like the best thing you could imagine. And uh, there's essential oils for lang lang. And it's just a great tree and it grows really big and great. So when I was first here, I had some uh, uh, fruitless palm trees in the front that were, that were covering the house for shade, but they weren't edible, so I got rid of them. So I put this one here, this lang lang tree. I'm really excited about this tree. And here's another one I put in when I took the other ones out. This is a jackfruit tree. Uh, so this is an orange jackfruit. Each uh, jackfruit has different colors. This is an orange jackfruit tree. So uh, it's going to grow really nice, and it's going to block the, the house very nice as well. Yeah, there's a nice uh, spider in there as well Ooh. to catch uh, some of the bugs. The spider's waiting for the jackfruit. All right, this is a starfruit tree. And uh, as you can see, it's a lot of starfruit on here. And, uh, and, and this is my most fruiting tree right now. Some of it's green, uh, but this tree will fruit all year long. Look at all this starfruit on there. And this tree will fruit all year long. And uh, this is a little carambola. And uh, in the store, one of these, you can get maybe $2 for just one. And, and they're not even good. These are, you can pick them ripe and they're, they're just wonderful. So, so now we see we have four coconut trees. We have one, two, three, and four lining my property. And you can look how big they are and tall they've gotten. Uh, these are actually dwarf coconut trees. And uh, they, uh, so I won't have to climb them too high to pick them. And there's different colored coconuts. We have green coconuts and we also have yellow coconuts. We have one, two, three, four, five, six coconut trees on a property. Uh, so uh, I originally was going to put the whole property in coconut trees because I love them that much. But I figured I'd get more uh, variety because coconuts take quite a while before we get them. All right, so here's another tree I have in my front yard. This is an avocado tree. As I said, I have several avocados for different seasons. Uh, so this is an avocado tree that actually once broke and it came back. Uh, it was real short and it came back and it's growing real nicely. Uh, this is, I believe, is a winter avocado. So I have a different avocado for every season. Literally all year I'll have avocados. And this is a really nice spot for it in the front. And because they're green, not as many people will identify that there's a fruit on there. Uh, so it, it, I thought it was a good tree for the front of the house. Uh, so I got nice shade for my house, but the trees aren't as close to the house. So critters can't be climbing on my roof and so on. Uh, but basically, uh, there it is. Uh, and let's go to the next tree. Let's check out my next tree. So there's, here's a, another look at our coconut trees uh, on the property just surrounding my courtyard. Uh, and then there's this one here. Well, there's a couple more trees I want to show you. This is a sapodilla tree, also known as a Nisberry, or Nisboro, and also known as a Chico. And it's a brown sugar, a fruit that tastes like brown sugar. It's very common, very popular. Uh, but sapodia, and it grows really big and nice. It's a, a beautiful tree. Right behind it, I have a Monsta Dolorosis fruit that tastes like the combination between a, a pineapple and a banana. Uh, it's almost, it almost looks like an alligator, and, and the, the, the pieces peel off of it. It's not a tree. It's a, it's a shrub, and in the middle of the flower is where the fruit is. All right, so there's the miracle fruit plant, and uh, it's a miracle fruit's a small berry. The reason why they call it miracle fruit is... It tastes, uh, it's a little berry, but you eat it, and anything you eat that's sour, within 15 minutes after it is sweet. It's really amazing. And here's another Masa del Rosso plant we have here with a spider in front of it. <laughs> and two spiders in front of it. And uh, basically, that's the yard. We have room for a couple more trees, but I'm just letting it be like this now. And, uh, you know, plant as much as you can, wherever you can. And that's my goal, to plant this up so I can have food for me and other people as well and it's great so thanks for checking out this update of my fruit garden as, as the trees grow i will give you more updates put your comments or questions below the video until then have a great day and a great raw life nature's wealth good for your health this is the raw life health show raw life brighten up your life